parking shop. This is the place where the feud started where I destroyed Classic. Grumpy Cheeto, I got something very important for you and Bobby Black and Wesley Light at the end of this video. This place where I officially began my feud with Classic and would gradually take over his channel and destroy him, this is symbolic. This place pumps me up, pumps the adrenaline up. I take personal pleasure in doing videos at this place because I love to destroy lives. Well, actually I like to make people's lives better by showing them their flaws. And then they accept truth and reality. And you phonies are better to accept for truth and reality and make my crazy pretzel t-shirt. I got something special at the end of this for you guys. You gotta love it. But before we go into that, let's go into the TNA Get Night Show. It was pretty good. Actually, it would be last night's show because today's Friday. Beautiful sunny day today. So, you know, because I can't make the sun just randomly appear, you know, I'm not I'm not like a sorcerer or anything, but anyway, tonight's Impact Show was pretty good, I thought. Um, let's go into it. We start the show off with Hogan in the ring with the Immortal, and then there's like these, it was like D'Lo Brown and these other TNA officials, like, separating the, um, Sting and RVD on the outside, and then, um, Hogan's talking trash, and he wants, you know, demands to know who the, uh, network is, who's behind it. And Sting said that next week he'll find out who either he or she is. So we have to wait till next week to find out who's behind it. And then, um, Robert Roode, like, starts, um... Well, basically, Immortal starts jumping the officials, and then Sting and RVD, and then, um, Fortune runs out to make the save, and then Robert Roode starts talking on the mic to Hogan. Um, basically ripping on him, saying how Hogan was his, you know, childhood hero, how he wanted to become a professional wrestler because of him. And then now Hogan's, you know... You know, a vulture sucking the life out of the the money out of the company that they built. So, this that's not really a, so much a feud with Hogan and Rude. It's basically going to be like a tag team feud coming up. Because next we have backstage Matt Hardy, cold-blooded killer Matt Hardy. He's not really that cold-blooded. I'm more cold-blooded than he is. But anyway, Matt Hardy's backstage talking. And uh, basically he says that... Um, next week, he's going to have a partner, like, which we're thinking it's Jeff Hardy, but spoiler, it's not going to be Jeff Hardy, but I'm not going to totally spoil who it's going to be. But uh, basically, he's going to have somebody, like, come with uh, come with him to challenge Beard Money next week. We have uh, TNA's uh, Sin Cara wrestler, which is played by Amazing Red, Sangriento, and he takes on Suicide one-on-one. -on -one. This match was pretty good. I gave it a 3 out of 5. Went about 5 minutes. Lots of good moves in the matchup. The match started off with a nice head scissor on Suicide to the Floor by Sangriento. Then we had a uh, final cut by Suicide for a 2 count. And then the finish of the matchup was Suicide was going for the uh, Ozzy Osbourne Suicide Solution. Which uh, he countered with a uh, Frankensteiner. And then... Um, and then he uh, basically hit like this uh, springboard reverse like diamond cutter move and pinned him with that. So, San Grianto wins his debut on uh, Impact and congratulations to him. Or congratulations to Amazing Red. At least he's getting getting to wrestle and get some airtime, even though it's not Red. Or is it? I don't know. Anyway, next we have uh, Hogan and Bischoff backstage again discussing who's behind the network and they... They talk about if it's Ric Flair or not, but then Bischoff's like, nah, Flair doesn't play, Flair is dirty, though. He wouldn't do that. So, discussion continues. Next, we have Mexican America in the ring celebrating Cinco de Mayo, which uh, is a fine holiday, and, you know, I definitely salute the, what, I think with Cinco de Mayo, it was like they won, like, a huge battle against the French or something, which, like, kind of fulfilled their revolution against the French. I, f I forget exactly what it is, but, um, you know, total props to him. But I'm sure the Mexicans aren't really totally happy with a uh, racist uh, TNA angle here with uh, Hernandez and uh, Anarchia. And basically in this promo, it's basically, you know, us Americans should salute the flag because they're going to, you know, take our land and take our women and children and all that fun stuff. You know, if you're going to take something, you might as well cough up the money to actually purchase some land. So, because actually... If you try taking anything, I think the government would probably shut you down pretty quick. So, maybe if you show some money that you could purchase some land, maybe the government might be a little more easy with you. Just saying. So, 
Anyway, to sum up this promo, basically they called Hector Guerrero and Hector Guerrero was other Spanish commentator of the ring. Hector Guerrero is Mexican, they're, you know, totally props to him. The other guy's Puerto Rican, so they beat the crap out of him. Or, well, they, they shove him down and they're gonna beat the crap out of him and then they're gonna beat up Hector too. Ink Ding comes out and makes the save. Everyone's happy. So I guess we got an Ink Ding Mexican-American feud. Which doesn't make sense, because last week we had Shelly and Saban, you know, chase them off. So soon there'll be a feud between those two guys with these guys. So unless they do some kind of three-way feud, it kind of doesn't make sense. So I don't know. I think we'll at least get Ink Dink in Mexican-America, but who knows. I didn't like that they didn't include the Motor City Machine Guns. Next we have a uh, tag team match, Bully Ray and Gunner against AJ and Christopher Daniels. Um, I gave this a 3 out of 5. Um, AJ and Daniels won via DQ. Most of the match was actually just offense on uh, Gunner for the good guys, pretty much. Uh, there was a nice total elimination modification maneuver, I could call it. Modified total elimination. You don't know the total elimination? Look up the Eliminators. Awesome tag team in ECW back in the day. So, AJ, like, Daniels is beating up Gunner. Gunner fights back, and then AJ gets tagged in and hits a nice springboard uh, flying forearm. Then he's gonna do another springboard move, and then Bully Ray, like, shakes the ropes and stops him. So then Bully Ray grabs his chain and comes in the ring. You figure this would be a DQ at this point. Then Tommy Dreamer, of all people, runs out. And, uh, looks like he's gonna go after Bully Ray, then he pile drives AJ. The, then the ref rings the bell, so the weapon, you know, using the weapon wasn't a DQ, it was the interference. So, so AJ and Daniels win, um, by, D, by DQ. So then every, backstage, like, next segment, everyone's all like, I can't believe Tommy did that, man! I can't believe it! You know, and then, they sh they're, today's like, we're gonna get a word with Dreamer, then they just show Dreamer, like, knocking over lockers and tables and... You know, going, ah, or something like that. And then, um, AJ and Daniels are talking, and AJ's, like, flicking his fingers like he lost, you know, circulation to his fingers or something from the pile driver. Numbness and tingling. And, um, basically, you know, he wants an answer, or they're gonna beat the shit out of Dreamer, from what they said. So then we have Matt Hardy and Bully Ray backstage, and then Bully Ray's kind of bragging that Dreamer made the right decision, and then he's gonna enjoy toying with his mind. So... So basically what TNA's doing with this whole Dreamer thing is they're doing like the, if you kind of remember the HBK JBL storyline from a couple years back where like HBK was broke and he started working for JBL against his will. This is kind of what it is. It's basically Dreamer having to work for a moral to keep his job to feed his family or something. I mean, can they get something else to do for Dreamer besides like the same old, you know, baby face, you know, yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, help my family or what, I, I gotta do what's right, you know. It's just, they always do this exact same baby face thing with Dreamer. Why can't Dreamer, who's supposed to be the innovator of violence, why don't you, why doesn't he just attack AJ and just side with the mortal and just be evil, diabolical, be an evil slime scumbag like the rest of them? I mean, they have to play off the whole baby face thing, which I guess Dreamer does well, but I mean, that's all he's ever done. So... I don't really like that so much. So, anyway, that's my little rant on that. What, what, what do we got next? Um, next we got Winter and Angelina backstage. Um, basically, you know, and, uh, Winter hyping, you know, destroying Velvet later or something. Then we have uh, a very long promo with the Jarrett's and Vel Velvet Sky. Karen and Velvet going back and forth at it. This promo was actually pretty entertaining. It was kind of long, but it was pretty entertaining. But basically, at first, Karen's going to make um, Winter and Angelina against Velvet like in a handicap match. Then Kurt Angle comes out and says he's talked to a network executive. And uh, it's going to be uh, still a mixed mixed handicap or a handicap match, but it's going to involve Kurt Angle on Velvet's side and Jeff Jarrett on their side. So that's our main event. Um, good promo, just went a little bit long. Next, we had... Bischoff backstage talking with Gunnar and Murphy, and he's sick of those guys. And he like he's gonna have them face each other, and then whoever loses gets fired, or is out of a, or out of a mortal at least. So then we have next Crimson looking for Samoa Joe backstage with a sledgehammer, a la Triple H. Then we have Murphy versus Gunnar. This match was it was okay. It wasn't the worst match ever, but it wasn't great. Um, I gave it a two out of five. It went about three minutes or so. Um, Rob Terry wins the matchup. He, like, won it with a suplex countered into a power slam. So, wasn't the worst match ever, but 
I would have rather have seen Rob Terry get kicked out of Mortal and Murphy, even though I don't like either guy. Next we have, uh... Well, actually, this next backstage segment was funny because it was Hogan and Bischoff again. And, uh, Bischoff was just like, he's doing this, and he's like, that was bad. And then Hogan's like, they're fighting for a spot in Immortal? Are you kidding me? So, either they were ripping on, you know, that they actually booked this, like, this, this little match thing, or, uh, like, they're so disappointed that these guys are fighting for a spot in Immortal. But it was weird because when Bischoff's like, that was bad or something, it just seemed like they are ripping on the booking. So, I don't really understand it. Maybe you guys can correct me. Next, we have Crimson finding Joe. And I like that Joe's kind of getting involved in this Crimson Abyss feud, like I mentioned that last week. But I didn't like what Crimson says, like, at the end of it. He's like, if you're going to stay out of my way, you'll stay out of my damned way. So I really didn't make any sense. He just said the same thing twice. So, whatever. Next, we have Miss Teshmacher versus Madison Knight for the knockouts title. Um, I think Miss Teshmacher has a hotter, en- hotter entrance than Velvet Sky. And if you don't believe me, check it out. But anyway, um, basically, I didn't write Madison, right? Ugh, I'm Mickey James. I'm sorry, Mickey James. Miss Tashmacher, what I won. Um, this match was okay. I gave it a two out of five. It went about three minutes. Tashmacher had a couple nice moves, nice victory roll, and a nice Sinziguri kick. And then Mickey James would hit a nice hangman's, or hangwoman's neck breaker, as Taz called it. And then, um, that screaming DDT for a three count, so... Teshmacher sort of botched it a little bit. Like, she didn't really, like, hold Mickey up in the air and then go down with it. She kind of, like, started to lift her up and then just dropped down with it. I don't know. I thought it was kind of a botch, but not a bad match. Not a bad debut for Teshmacher. After the match, Madison Rain comes out and demands that another rematch against Mickey. So they make a stipulation where, um, uh, basically, like, it's going to be Mickey versus Madison for their knockouts title. And then if Mickey wins, Terra's contract is... No one void with it, with Madison, and she's free. So, it's a good promo. Next, we have uh, Bischoff backstage or outside or whatever, and then some X Division guys, Generation Me, Kendrick, and Amazing Red. They're basically, you know, wondering why they haven't had TV time or opportunity on Impact or whatever. And Bischoff basically says, you know, because you're not taller, get the fuck out of here. But it's funny because Generation Me is feuding with each other, but they were both standing there together. So, Whatever that was. Then we had a Sting RVD promo for the for Sacrifice, which was okay. Then next we have uh, the main event, which went about six minutes or so. They had a commercial break in there. Um, Velvet Sky and Kurt Angle against Angelina Love, Winter, and Jeff Jarrett. Uh, the match started off. Angelina like pretty much beats up Velvet for a while. Then we go to a commercial break, come back. Um, Jeff, uh, Kurt Angle gets a tag in starts beating up Jarrett pretty bad. Like, Jarrett counters an angle slam with a nice arm drag. And then, uh, Kurt Angle gets him, like, in the ankle lock rather quickly. And then, uh, Karen was in the ring, and then Velvet blind tags in. She goes after Karen, winner and Angelina jump her, and then she hits a double DDT on him and pins him. So, Velvet and Kurt Angle win this match. I gave it two out of five. Wasn't bad. Um, eh, maybe I'll give it two and a half out of five. The only problem was it seemed kind of rushed. You know, that's like they have the one minute commercial break, then a couple more minutes, and then the match is over. Kind of like a weak main event. You know, they they, get, they gotta give their main events more time or less commercial breaks or something. So, I'm Crazy Pretzel, the best of the rest in Revolution, but the Unsquared Circle, they're all unconstitutional. They're composed of Bobby Black, Wizard Light, and Grumpy Cheeto, three massive phonies, all messed up like the spelling of baloney. They all act like they're better than the YWC, that other reviewers are all mediocrity. And that we don't have class. Listen, phonies, I'm not the one being an ass. If you're marketing merchandise, then where's my crazy pretzel shirt? Promotion is your game, except you three do it with girly flirts. The true face of professional wrestling? Phony, don't make me laugh. The only thing you're the true face of is diarrhea and gas. You guys are like record players, totally out of date and shape. You cannot fast forward or skip, so you guys need to be replaced. And who better than Crazy Pretzel? Who better to represent the rest of the revolution? A man of wisdom and knowledge, and who went to college. An individual who doesn't lie and put down others, who doesn't disrespect and push down their mothers. So to sum up this rap, you two see, you, you all got one week. Either you make my Crazy Pretzel shirt, or else I'm gonna cause some capillary permeability leaks. <laughs>